Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to continue discussing types of chemical reactions. Today, we're going to specifically talk about single replacement reactions. Today's essential question, how are the products of single replacement reactions determined? Okay, you're going to need your periodic tables and polyatomic ion handouts handy. Okay, single replacement reactions. So the definition of a single replacement reaction, also known as a single displacement reaction, atoms of one element replace the atoms of a second element in a compound. So the general formula for a single replacement reaction is A plus XB produces X plus AB. So you have, an, you have a single element and you have a compound. Okay. And what you end up doing is the single element switches places with one of the atoms in the compound. Okay. Um, single replacement reactions occur with ionic compounds. So the AB in particular is going to be ionic, which means, don't forget, you're going to have to always check charges. During a single replacement reaction, so during a single replacement reaction, a metal can replace a metal, um, or another way to think of it is the positive replaces a positive. So remember the jaggedy line on the periodic table? The stuff on this side will replace something else on this side, or a non-metal replaces a non-metal, or a negative replaces a negative, or the stuff on this side of the periodic table. So, um, basically, you look at this A here. If this A turns out to be a metal, it'll replace the X. If the A turns out to be a non-metal, it'll re be replacing the B. It's important to note that not all single replace replacement reactions take place. So, how do you know which ones do or which ones don't? Um, we use something called the activity series. Um, you have your activity series on the back of your periodic table, polyatomic ion chart area, but it's down towards the bottom. Okay? Um, and the activity series is a list of elements organized according to their tendency to react. In general, an element can displace those below it to form compounds in solution, but not those above it. Okay, so let me see if I can give you a little story that helps me remember what's going on here. So you'll notice first, let's look at this um, activity series right here. You have this on your periodic table. Um, it says decreasing reactivity going down. So that means that um, the guys up at the top are more reactive, right? I like to think of them as stronger. And down here, these guys here are less reactive. Or you could think of them as weaker. Okay? So, here's my little story. We've got our, um, our general formula. We've got A plus XB produces X plus AB. Okay, so the question is, will this really happen? Can the A hook up with the B by knocking off the A? Well, if you think of, um, okay, everybody wants to hook up, right? They, they, they don't want to be alone. They want to be with somebody else. So what happens is A and, a and X have a fight over B. Who's going to win? The stronger one. And the stronger one is the one that's higher up on the reactivity series. Um, I don't know if that helps. That's how I like to remember it. Okay, let's go over the steps to write or complete a single replacement or displacement reaction. Okay, and as we're going through the steps, we'll do the example Al plus H2SO4. We know this is going to be a single replacement reaction because we have a single element and a compound, and this compound's ionic, so we can have a displacement or replacement reaction. All right, so step one, determine which atoms are cations and which are anions. What I would do actually is go through and write down the complete charges, then you've got them for later. 
So we've got aluminum plus H2SO4 producing something, possibly. All right, aluminum is a metal, and it forms a cation with a 3 plus charge. Hydrogen, it's written first, which means it's in the group 1A area. It's a metal, forms a cation with a 1 plus charge. And then we've got sulfate, SO4, which is a polyatomic ion with a 2 minus charge. Okay. So now determine which atom is to be replaced. So here's the deal. Who Aluminum wants to hook up with somebody. Who is it that aluminum is going to want to hook up with? Is aluminum trying to hook up with hydrogen or with sulfate? Well, positive and positives don't really like each other. So aluminum is trying to hook up with sulfate. So aluminum is going to fight hydrogen for sulfate. Okay? Does that make sense, hopefully? I'm going to duke it out. So we're going to check the activity series to determine if the reaction will take place. So the winner of the fight between aluminum and hydrogen gets to hook up with sulfate. And the winner is going to be determined by who is higher on the reactivity series. So let's go back to the reactivity series. And let's find aluminum right there. And hydrogen is right there. Who's higher up? Aluminum. So aluminum wins the fight. So check the reactivity series to, t to see if the reaction will take place. Well, aluminum is stronger than than, H, than hydrogen, so he's going to win the fight, he's going to knock off hydrogen, hook up with sulfate, making a new compound. So the answer is yes. The reaction is going to take place. Okay, the next step is to write the skeleton equation. So we're going to take, we're going to, we're going to swap the aluminum and the hydrogen because the aluminum won the fight. So Neo, really quickly, why is there a 2 with that hydrogen? Why is it H2SO4? Well, the 2 is there because hydrogen's a 1 plus, sulfate's a 2 minus, they need to neutralize. Basically, don't take subscripts with you unless it's part of a polyatomic. Okay, so we're just going to bring H over here because he lost the fight. And AL gets to now hook up with SO4. Okay, and we'll put those charges back so we can remember. Although the charge on the um, on the hydrogen doesn't really matter anymore. Okay, so there we go. We've got the skeleton equation. The next thing to do is to make sure all our ionic compounds are neutral. So we have Al3SO42, which is completely not neutral. Right, so our formula is going to need to be Al2SO4, 3, right? That gets rid of the charges. Now we're neutral. Um, the next thing I should have written this down, but I didn't, is check for diatomics. Don't want to forget that. Remember the HN7. And hydrogen is indeed a diatomic, so we need to make him H2. But keep in mind, the reason he is H2 is not because we brought this two over, right? But because he's a diatomic. All right, so the last step is then to balance the equation. So let me rewrite it and get rid of all of those extra charges because we've neutralized everything. We've got aluminum plus H2, SO4 produces hydrogen plus Al2SO43. All right, and we've got aluminum, we've got hydrogen, and we've got SO4, and it's a polyatomic, and because we see him on both sides of the equation, we can just write it as SO4. Okay, for aluminum, we have one on the reactant side, two on the product side. Hydrogen, two on the reactant side, two on the product side. And sulfate, one on the reactant side, and three on the product side. And we don't necessarily need to save any of these guys till last, so let's go through this. We're going to fix the aluminums 
um, by putting a two. And hydrogens are good, sulfates not so much. So we're going to need to put a three here, which then gives us six hydrogens and three sulfates. So the aluminums are still good, the sulfates are good, we've messed up the hydrogens. So if we put a three here, we have six hydrogens. And we've got our answer. So there you go. That's how you complete single replacement reactions. Okay, let's try another problem. Um, this time, however, why don't you hit pause, see if you can go through the steps by yourself, using your notes if necessary, then hit play and see how you did. All right, so the first step is to figure out the charges. Bromine has a one minus charge. Sodium is a one plus charge. And chlorine is a one minus charge. So this time, who's gonna fight with who? Bromine is gonna fight with chlorine, right? Both of them wanna hook up with, with sodium. Because remember, minuses like to hook up with pluses. Minuses and minuses don't really get along all that well. All right, so let's see if this reaction will occur. So bromine and chlorine are gonna fight, so let's find them on the periodic table, or on the, sorry, on the reactivity series. You'll notice that the halogens or the negatives are down below, okay? So these up here are gonna be our cations, and the guys below are gonna be our anions. Okay, so we've got bromine here, and chlorine is up above. So when they fight, who's gonna win the fight? Chlorine's gonna win the fight, which means chlorine gets to hook up with sodium, which is already the case. So bromine has to stay by himself. So the answer is NR, which means no reaction. Okay, that's it for today.